climate. A, uh, a, apart from uh, from uh, uh, heating uh, or exchanging the heat between the atmosphere and the ocean, uh, there is an uh, exchange of, of various uh, various uh, uh, things, various. Uh, mm matter between the ocean and atmosphere which can influence or influences the, uh, the, the climate change. One of the things is the carbon cycle and, and global warming and uh, because the, the ocean is controlling the CO2, CO2 concentration in the, in the, in the atmosphere therefore uh, the, uh, the and CO2, CO2 is one of the uh, um, greenhouse gases Therefore, the ocean plays an important role in determining the, the level of the CO2. And it, it is, uh, ocean is able to control this and, uh, and absorb the extra CO2 which is, uh, which, is, which is released into the atmosphere. So the, but the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the solution of the CO2 depends on the, on the temperature or the seawater temperature. Therefore, uh, the temperature of the bottom water formation determines how much CO2 is dissolved in, in the deep ocean water. And uh, so the rate of overturn of the ocean determines the burial rate of sea from the atmosphere. Therefore, the, the, the ocean takes some carbon from the atmosphere and buries it into the deep. Into the, it's a deep part. And then organic carbon accumulates in sediments deepening depending on the O2 content in the, you know, the deep ocean. Therefore, there is the, this is the mechanism how the ocean controls the CO2 and how the ocean controls one of the very important uh, uh, greenhouse gases which are due to the anthropo anthropogenic activity. And, uh, So the, uh, this is, I just don't want to enter into this, this thing, but organic carbon in sediments is reduced to methane, methane gas, and methane gas migrates upward and can be trapped as a frozen gas hydrates near the ocean floor. Therefore, anyhow, it is the, the, the carbon is, uh, is, uh, is trapped in, a, in, a, in the bottom of the ocean, and which is, makes part of the CO2 uh, So, so deep ocean water properties and circulation play critical roles in Earth's climate system. It modulates climate on long time scale, hundreds to thousand years, and uh, especially the influence of the uh, of the of the world ocean is not only, as I told you before, in uh, in uh, absorbing heat, but also in absorbing some some greenhouse gases, and. Uh, the phase lag or uh, the time scale which which uh, which is reacting well, by which is directly reacting the whatever is happening in the ocean in the atmosphere is around hundreds to thousands of years and uh, the ocean has enormous capacity to absorb and release greenhouse gases so the rate and temperature and composition of seawater circulating through the deep ocean is vitally important in assessing the long-term climate change. The long-term climate change means that whatever ocean is doing today, it will be felt in a thousand or hundreds of years. This is this is very important. So, what are we doing now? This is something which will be, which will reflect on whatever is happening in in hundreds of years. This is this is very very important concept. What uh, we have to take into consideration when we are considering the planning or whatever of the human activities which can have the, 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 uh, the consequences on the, on the world climate. This is just uh, a few things what, uh, what I wanted to show, tell you from the last, uh, last, um, last PowerPoint. And now we have, uh, we'll go to the, uh, 
to the uh, to the in, into more details concerning the the uh, the, uh, the equations of motions and uh, and some solutions of the equations of motions. And before we go into this thing, we have to consider that the the geophysical fluid dynamics or the uh, or, or or the uh, coordinate system where we are now is the uh, the, the, the rotating system which rotates and therefore some additional forces are entering into the play into the role into the plate with respect to the uh, non-rotating system and uh, so here we will give some uh, rotation definition we'll give some uh, some definitions uh, define some forces which are simply present because of the system is rotating and then we did which are centrifugal force, Coriolis force, and then there are inertial motions. These, these things are closely uh, related to each other. And uh, so the, the Earth is rotating, as you, as you know. There, is a, there was, a, there was a, a PhD thesis like a few years ago where the the, the student wanted to show that the, the, the earth is flat and I think that the, 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 uh, the thesis was accepted also I don't know any, any detail about that anyhow it's a curiosity uh, so the earth is rotating so we measure things relatively to this rotating reference reference frame okay this is that's very important and quantity that tells us how fast the something is rotating is defined as angular speed or angular velocity, which is the practically the angle of rotation divided by, by time. And uh, the whole circle is expressed in radians. Then, then, then for the Earth, uh, the, the whole circle is done in one day. And we have, uh, so the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the angular speed is 0.7 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds to the minus 1. So this is the, that you have to, you should remember this number. Also it can be shown that omega is V over R. V is the linear velocity, measure velocity, and R is the radius of the axis to the axis of rotation. Therefore V, V is omega R. So this, these are the definition. And what is important here is that, as in any rotating system, we have the centrifugal and centrif centripetal force. Centrifugal force is uh, acting from the center of the of the axis of rotation toward uh, uh, toward uh, outwards, and then we have centripetal force, which acts toward the center of the axis of rotation. And uh, what, let's see what how this looks like uh, in a, uh, in a, and what, there are some definitions again. The uh, vector that expresses direction of rotation, how fast it is rotating, is defined a uh, vector pointing in the direction of a thumb. Okay, this way, using right hand rule, curling fingers in the direction of rotation. So we have. Uh, so this is the this is the the we this is the the Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction, and uh, and here are these two forces which are acting. One force which is uh, acting toward the center of the rotation is the gravity force. And let's see. Centrifugal and centripetal forces. Centripetal force is the actual force that keeps the ball tethered. Here it is the it is the string, but it can be the gravitational force. The gravitational force is in a case of the rotating Earth. Centrifugal force is a really a pseudo force, apparent force that one feels due to the lack of awareness that the coordinate system is rotating or curving. So the centrifugal acceleration is proportional to the square of the rotation speed and and the radius of the distance from the 
from the uh, from the center from the axis of rotation out with it acts outward and units are obviously meter per second square and uh, so the, if you look from the uh, from from top from the pole the the rotation will be this this way let's see in more details how it looks uh, how, what is the effect of the centrifugal force on the Earth and on the ocean? Centrifugal force acts on the ocean and Earth and it is pointed outward away from the rotation axis. Therefore, it is maximum at the equator, obviously, because it's proportional to the radius or to the distance between the axis of rotation and, uh, and the point where you are. And uh, minimum is at pole, where the radius of rotation is zero. And so here we have the rotation rate of the Earth. And at the equator, we have the, the radius of the Earth is, uh, is 6,300 6, kilometers. And if we calculate the centrifugal force, this is this one here, which is 0 0.032 meter per second square. And if we compare this with the gravity force, which is here, we can see that the, that the uh, centripetal force is much stronger in our case. This is a gravity force with respect to the centrifugal force. So we have, a, it's a, like a two orders of magnitude larger is gravity force than, than the centrifugal force. And centrifugal force causes the equator to be deflected because it's always, centrifugal force is always perpendicular to the Earth's surface. If a whole surface, whole Earth is were covered by by the by the water, it would be deformed by 21 kilometer outward com, uh, com, with respect to the poles. So, which is only 0.3 percent with respect to the to the uh, to the uh, radius uh, uh, in uh, at poles. And this is so the that the deformation of the Earth is really very very tiny due to the centrifugal force simply because of the fact that the centrifugal force is much much uh, weaker than the than the gravity force or than the centri centripetal force therefore the precise measurements of the radius have shown that the equatorial radius is this thing and polar is this one, the average is this thing here. And the ocean is not 20 kilometers deeper at the equator, rather the Earth itself is deformed. It's not that, that the, the, because the, uh, the deformation is, uh, the deformation is uh, not only on the, on the water, but it's also on the solid Earth. And uh, practically we bury the centrifugal force in a certain way, in the gravity term, which we can call effective gravity. So we, we do the 9.8 minus 0.03, and we end up with 9.8, more or less, in the first approximation. And so we have, we are, when we are talking about the gravity, we are really talking about the sum of the, gra uh, the gravity and centrifugal force due to the Earth rotation. So this is the, uh, that's the, that's the gravity. And now we are coming to a, to a very important uh, force, which is the Coriolis force, Coriolis effect, which is, the, uh, which is simply due to the fact that uh, the, the, we, we are sitting on the rotating frame. If we have inertial motion, the, uh, the, the particle which is, which is thrown from the poles towards south, it should go along the straight line because it's inertial, there is no uh, forces acting to it. But since the, uh, since the, 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 uh, the particle is sitting on the rotating Earth, if you look from the absolute system, it should be along the straight line. But if you're sitting on the, on the Earth, you will see the particle deflect, deflecting, deflecting to the, to, to the to the left with respect to the to the really straight line where, where you threw the your, your particle or the ball. 
And so this is the this differences between the intended path and actual path is called the Coriolis deflection. Coriolis deflection has, uh, is the, simply due to the fact that we are everything what we are doing is we are doing on a rotating system and not in the absolute system. Okay, so the Coriolis force is the really Coriolis effect is really the apparent deflection of that inertially moving body just due to the rotation of you as observer. Because you are you are rot rotating as well as as the, the, the particle which is moving on the sea surface. If you were in the absolute system in a in a in a star, you will see the straight line. But since you are at the, at the rotating Earth, you see this, this deflection. So Coriolis effect deflects bodies, water parcel, air parcel, to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. You imagine that in the southern hemisphere, the, the, the ball going that way, and then it goes and it's deflected again to, to, the, uh, uh, to the left. We are the northern hemisphere to the right and, uh, and the southern hemisphere to the left because of, of, this, of this fact that we are, we are in a rotating system. Um, so in our, uh, later on we'll see that in equations of motion we have to introduce this apparent force which will, uh, which will, keep, uh, which will keep into the consideration the fact that there is a Coriolis deflection that we are sitting on a rotating, on a rotating system. Um, okay, I, I heard and uh, there are some, uh, uh, if, you, if you have the train, the, the, uh, by the, uh, the train which is going on the rail, uh, rail, railway, it, if it's, uh, if I did, if you, one, in one direction always hand goes in, in a, on the rail, if the rail which is on the right hand side will be more used than the other one on the left hand side because the Coriolis force will be trying so always to push the terrain to the right. And um, let's see what is the so we have as I told you before we have to introduce additional terms in the momentum equation and uh, and the horizontal motion is much greater than vertical, so we introduce this in an X momentum equation. We introduce this term here, which is the the the, uh, the Coriolis term, which is proportional to the velocity perpendicular to the x-axis. In Y momentum equation, we introduce the this term here, where it is proportional to the velocity perpendicular to the y-axis. So the F is this thing here, which is the Coriolis parameter. It depends on latitude and projection of the total Earth rotation on a local vertical. So this is this is the how really Coriolis diffraction looks like if you if you threw the ball from the pole, northern southern pole or northern pole. It it is this Coriolis deflection to the right or to the left depending on whether you are on the northern or southern hemisphere. And this, this thing has to, be, has to be somehow explained or related to the, to the, to the, to the, by the Coriolis force. So, well, let's just uh, introduce the, the concept of the, of the complete force, momentum, and balance with rotation. Uh, this is the uh, this is the conservation like one of the conservation uh, rules, the conservation of the momentum, which says simply that the, that the horizontal acceleration plus advection plus Coriolis force is it has to be equal to the forces which are acting on the water par parcel. So we have the horizontal acceleration, Coriolis force pressure gradient force and viscous term which is in x direction in y direction we have a similar thing and then again pressure gradient force and viscous terms 
this is the, the these are the forces and these are the practically the the <coughs> acceleration and then vertically in a vertical we have acceleration plus advection again in the vertical we neglect the very small Coriolis term we have the pressure gradient for effective gravity which includes the centrifugal force and the viscous terms in, a, in their component in the vertical so this is how we introduce the the Coriolis force into the uh, into the equations of motion and this this is the, these are final uh, final equations of motion we will be coming back to these uh, 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 more times and this is the these are the advection term this is the uh, we neglected the um, the uh, small Coriolis term in the, along the vertical and this is the the uh, uh, the gravity which contains also the the uh, um, the um, centrifugal force Okay. Let me see whether to should we go this way. Let me see. We can uh, we can see just uh, just to to mention. Uh, let me uh, give you. Uh, just give you a few few hints about some uh, some actions of the of the Coriolis force okay so this is the Coriolis in action in the ocean how we how we really see this Coriolis force this apparent force in the ocean we see this and these are the surface drifters these are the, the particles which are through thrown in the sea and follows the currents and uh, what we see is that they are doing the swiggles and they 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 are uh, they, 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 they were they were put into the Gulf of Alaska during and after a storm what you can see is that after a storm means that the particles has they have been given a push and then the force stopped this is a typical situation where the Coriolis force becomes the only important force in the ocean because there is no pressure gradient force, there is no wind stress and there is only the, the, the we keep only the, um, the, um, the acceleration, Coriolis force and, and possibly the, 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 the friction and uh, what is this? This is corkscrews type of the, of the uh, uh, clockwise motions which gets weaker as the motion is damped by friction so this is what I told you we have the acceleration on one hand side we have the Coriolis force and we have the friction okay and the friction obviously finally damps completely these uh, these oscillations but in the first uh, very first moment you can see these first part the, 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 the this, these wiggles are very uh, almost constant uh, amplitudes because the, the friction didn't get into action so much but then later on you see that they are becoming more and more uh, uh, damped and this is how we see the, the Coriolis force in action we call these, uh, these currents inertial currents where the, 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 the particle does the complete circle in a inertial period. Inertial period is uh, is uh, um, uh, two pi divided is uh, is a t uh, period of rotation multiplied by the sine of the uh, just of the uh, of the latitude co co uh, cosine of the latitude. So these are the inertial inertial currents where we really um, isolate completely. The, uh, the the Coriolis force action and this you can see very quite often in in the ocean when when there is a push of the wind and it stops suddenly and then gives the particles start to move and there is no anymore any force and then the particle will going the uh, do these the circles simply due to the rotating earth 
And uh, we, so you see the <coughs> this is the balance of Coriolis or an acceleration term, which is this, which makes the the uh, the, the inertial motion. In the northern hemisphere, this is the clockwise motion, and you have the acceleration, and this is the period of 2 pi over f. And uh, so this is the how it looks like, um, how it looks like this, 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 uh, this uh, circles which the particle does due to the balance between acceleration and inertial term. Acceleration, sorry, and Coriolis term. So the, the three approximate equations, which are, which are, which present this uh, this inertial uh, inertial force, are uh, these uh, approximate because we we uh, uh, neglect the the bottom the, the friction by neglecting bottom friction. This can can go forever. This kind of uh, of motion. So we have. Uh, horizontal west-east uh, term, where we have acceleration plus Coriolis is equal to zero. Before, so there is no, uh, there is no uh, uh, force on this side, there is no advective term, there is no uh, nonlinear terms in the equation. And here is a horizontal in y direction. <coughs> and in the vertically, we have only pressure gradient force plus effective gravity is equal to zero. So the Complete set of equations, very simple set of equations here. This one here, which has the the uh, the analytical solution, which uh, the, uh, describes this uh, this movement of water particles along the the circle in the period two pi over f. <laughs> so uh, so here is you can see that we kept the only these two terms, and we assume that there is no nonlinear terms. There is no uh, pressure gradient term, and there is no uh, there is no friction which acts on these on these particles. In a previous case, in a, a real experimental in a real world, you have seen that the 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 uh, the, 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 equa the solutions of this is uh, is not uh, 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 dies down with time simply because of the friction. Okay. So this is how the uh, the Coriolis fur, uh, force acts in a, in a, in a, in a real world, and we have uh, we have uh, we were able to to see them rather often and and, uh, and measure these this kind of, of movement. Okay, so this is the as far as the rotation is concerned, in what kind of uh, what kind of uh, effects have the rotation on a uh, on in a, in, the, in the in the ocean? Now let's see where are we? Okay, so now we will. Uh, we will see, uh, and then later on we will come back to this again. To the uh, uh, we will talk about a lot about the geostrophic flow. We have now the uh, the very specific solutions of the equations of motions, which is the which is the geostrophic flow or geostrophic balance. In the geostrophic balance, the similar as in the case of the inertial uh, flow, we keep only s few terms of the equations of motion and obtain uh, some solutions which are analytically, uh, we, which can be analytically, uh, uh, we obtain the equation which can be analytically solved. So we are now talking about the the, the thing which is the, called the geostrophic balance. We'll see what is this. And then we have a few things which are related to, to the geostrophic balance, which we will be talking within this, uh, this uh, chapter. And here is the Stuart chapter 10.3, 10.5, 10.6, where you can find the, the
the uh, if you want to go to the more dynamics, you will find this in a Stewart uh, book that I gave it to you, which you can find on the web. Um, so let's see how it looks like. Complete force balance with rotation is this, as I told you before. We have everything here. And uh, now let's see how uh, how come to the to the uh, to the geostrophic balance. What is the really what means the geostrophic balance? And uh, this is this is what we so a few minutes before, which are inertial motions where we kept this acceleration and Coriolis uh, and Coriolis term in horizontal. And geostrophic flow is another another type of solution where we did uh, where we did uh, another type of uh, assumption. We we neglect acceleration and vection uh, you remember acceleration where we were kept by with a uh, with inertial motions because there we have the time dependent motions here we assume that there is no time dependent motion therefore all the terms which contain the time time dependence is neglected and so we have uh, Coriolis force pressure gradient force and again we the, 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 we neglect the vis viscous term you remember in the in inner, case of inertial motion, we neglect the pressure gradient force. And the same thing or similar is in a, a y direction. And in, a, in vertical, we have the pressure gradient force, which is equal to zero. So these are the, the, this, this is the set of the equation which uh, describes the geostrophic flow. Uh, why we, why we, uh, is there anything why we are justified in, uh, in order to do this, uh, this assumption? Yes, it is, it is. If we, if we enter into the equation, these are the equations of motion, you can see uh, the equations of motion. If we enter into our equations of motion with the typical length scale and time scales of our motion, we will be able to find out which terms in the equation of motion we can uh, neglect. So let's uh, let's start with the with the real ocean. If you assume that the, the the length scale in the ocean, typical length scale in the ocean, is 10 to the 6 meters, which is a thousand kilometers, which is quite a realistic number, as we are thinking of the of the ocean, then we have the the depth is uh, 10 to the 3. Thousand meters, so one kilo on the other one kilometer. Velocity is uh, ten centimeters, more or less. This is a uh, very good. Then we have F, which is uh, ten to the minus four, and uh, the density is ten to the three, and uh, gravity, gravity is acceleration is ten meter cubic, ten meter per second squared. And if from these variables, we can calculate typical values for vertical velocity, pressure, and time, T. So vertical velocity and, uh, and pressure can be, vertical velocity can be calculated from the continuity equation. And if you uh, put instead of W, it says if you put instead of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of these values, you put the Typical values, you obtain that the uh, you obtain that the uh, W over H one is on ten to the minus four meter per second. So the the vertical velocity is uh, is very small with respect to the horizontal velocity, which is something which is quite uh, logical because the horizontal time length scale is orders of magnitude larger than the vertical scale. In vertical, we have one kil kilometer. In horizontal, we have thousands of kilometers. And uh, the pressure is uh, 10 to the 7, typical value of pressure. The time, the time, typical time, if you def define the time as L over U, where L is the, the 
typical horizontal scale and u is the typical velocity. We have a typical time scale on the 10 to the 7 uh, seconds. 10 to the 7 seconds is, uh, what is 10 to the 7 seconds? Is on the order of months. Okay. So if we, uh, in, a, in an equation of, uh, in a momentum equation for the vertical velocity, we include all these things, what we obtain here, we end up with, with these orders of magnitude. 10 to the minus 11, everything is 10 to the minus 11 except the, uh, the pressure, the pressure, vertical pressure gradient, uh, uh, and the, 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 uh, the uh, gravity constant, the gravity acceleration. So in the vertical, you have, we have this, this, uh, this equation. We reduce the equation, the whole equation, with all the acceleration and everything. We reduce that equation to this, uh, to this, uh, this equation here, which is hydrostatic, hydrostatic equation, where the the vertical pressure gradient is proportional to the to the uh, to the uh, uh, acceleration, gravity acceleration. The momentum equation for horizontal velocity in the x direction, if we uh, include all these numbers here, where we have u is on the order 10 to the minus 1, t we obtain that is 10 to the 7, so we have a 10 to the minus 8 is the acceleration. The horizontal advection terms are 10 to the minus 8, if you include these things here. And here we have a horizontal pressure gradient and this is the, the Coriolis the Coriolis parameter Coriolis force and you can see by including these typical values into the horizontal equation of motion we obtain that all the all the terms in this equation here are three orders of magnitude smaller than the pressure gradient term and the Coriolis force what that says that this says us that if we are having the, the length scales on the 10 to the 3 on the order of kilometer, if we have the, the time scale of a 10 to the 7 seconds, and uh, if we have a depth of the order of uh, 1,000 meters, the, the, we end up with uh, having the uh, very good approximation of the equation of motion, this thing here. So, the uh, we have uh, by doing these uh, these considerations we obtain that we can easily uh, 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 neglect all the terms which concerns the acceleration which concerns the nonlinear terms and we kept only the horizontal pressure gradient uh, horizontal pressure gradient which is which is balanced by the Coriolis force. So, and this is the, that's the, that's the geostrophic balance. So the geostrophic balance is uh, a balance which applies to oceanic flow with horizontal dimensions larger than roughly 50 kilometers and times greater than a few days. Not, it's really, this, therefore, it's not only that, that we have to have a thousand kilometers and 10 to the seven seconds we can we can already at 50 kilometers and time scale greater than a few days we can apply with a very good approximation the geostrophic balance therefore geostrophic balance is a balance which describes very well the the uh, the circulation in the world ocean which has shows a slow changes on a slow on a, on a, on a time scale on a length scale on the order of 50 to 100 kilometers. This is very, very important uh, result, which gives us the possibility to uh, reconstruct the, the flow, to reconstruct the flow in the ocean by looking at the pressure gradient and, 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 and the velocity, and we are able to reconstruct it very, very nicely, very easily. And we know that this is a very good, uh, that this is a very good uh, approximation 
of the of the Alvaro flow. So this is the this is how we use this in practice. In the practice, what we, what is enough that we reconstruct the, the 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 pressure, the horizontal pressure field, and uh, horizontal pressure free, and from the horizontal pressure field we reconstruct the flow. We can reconstruct in this very specific case in the atmosphere, we reconstruct the wind field, and uh, we have a high and low pressure centers, and we blow our, around the highs and lows. The, the, because in that case uh, the, the pressure gradient force is in, uh, in balance with the Coriolis force and uh, which is important the clockwise flow is around highs in the northern hemisphere due to the Coriolis or lows which is here is a low pressure the low is anti-clockwise flow this way, this way around the, the low pressure center Therefore, we just looking at the, at, the bottom, uh, at, the, at the horizontal pressure difference, we can obtain an, uh, uh, already qualitatively very good idea on how how the wind is blowing. Um, you know, for example, here today or yesterday, there is a bora, there is a fourth strong bora. What what that means? Let me. If we if we consider this that the the, or the so we are here this is the Adriatic we are here and we have the wind blowing from here okay how what should be the uh, the, the the position of a cyclone of low in order to pro, pro, uh, to, uh, to generate this kind of wind. So this is the law, right? So we have the, the, the wind coming from here, and uh, this is Italy, and at the same time here, the wind be blowing from here. So already uh, in a very qualitative way, when considering the geostrophic flow, the geostrophic balance, we can reconstruct the position of the of the mesoscale uh, of mid latitude cyclones where are they and how they how they act and and if they move how they what would be the consequence on the on the wind field okay so There is, a, there is always the question if you go to Australia whether, whether the, 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 uh, the bathroom sink where there will be the change of the rotation in the bathroom sink. The answer is no. The answer is no because uh, 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 I just in, in our previous uh, in our previous uh, slide we have defined that the geostrophic balance is valid for the, for the landscapes on the order of, uh, of a thousand kilometers, the bathtub is, uh, is really much, much smaller. Therefore, on a small, a small land scale, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the cannot, uh, uh, cannot, uh, it cannot be seen or cannot be noticed. Time scale is much shorter than a day. Pressure gradient force is slushing force is balanced by acceleration, not Coriolis force. In that case, the Coriolis force doesn't is not enough. It's the acceleration which is in balance with a uh, with a uh, with the pressure gradient force. Okay. So just just a few, yes. You have seen the bath down? <laughs> like like in my country. Yes. It's where the, the equator is, uh, the big equator flows first line. We see it uh, along the equator. If you move to the place where it crosses, actually, if you move to the north and you put uh, a small stick over the water, it floats in another direction. If you cross and go the other end, it changes the direction. 
So if it is not that, if it has so happened that Coriolis is a non the, uh, the yeah. parameter that is affecting the direction of the steam, because of course it is a small like bubble in which you pour the water, then what would be the cause of that? But you, what, what kind of body, water body you are talking about? How, how big is this water body? No, you, 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 like there are really a number of kids, they just pour water into a bowl. Yeah. Then you just put a small stick over the water. Ah. Yeah, it should should not be, you know, because the uh, the geostrophic balance is is not really is not really um, is is not acting on this on the small scale. How how big how big thing you are talking about? Pretty small. This one. But it's even big. Huh? Yeah, so it's in that case you cannot have it. As I, as I told you before, the um, uh, in that case the, the acceleration is the, 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 the term which, uh, which is in balance with the, uh, with the pressure gradient force and not just trophic, not the Coriolis force. Uh, the thing what you are talking about is uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, you will see later, we will show later, if you have a current which is, which is flowing the, uh, along the equator, you can have the, the, uh, um, the uh, convergence due to the changes of the sign of the, of the Coriolis parameter by crossing the equator. But this is, the, the, this is a pretty large scale. This is, we are talking about the hundreds of kilometers of the, of the, of the, of the, of the motion. So... Uh, it cannot be. I, I, I try, try to do it again, this experiment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the northern hemisphere, how it looks like in the northern hemisphere as we say the, low, the pressure gradient force which is defined as the, uh, from the vectorial point of view, is a vector which, whose magnitude is the horizontal gradient of pressure and the direction is uh, from the high pressure to the low pressure. In order to have the geostrophic flow, this pressure gradient force has to be balanced by the Coriolis force. And the Coriolis force is acting to the right hand side and the right angle to the right hand side with respect to the velocity. Therefore, the velocity has to be this way leaving this way in order to have a Coriolis force which balances the pressure gradient force. And what that means, that means that the, the, the uh, geostrophic velocity is such that uh, the particle is moving, leaving the low pressure on the left hand side. Okay? So, this is what I told you before. If we have the low pressure then we will be having the uh, counterclockwise movement because the low pressure has to be left on the left hand side of the movement of the particles on the left hand side of the uh, of the velocity so this is, and this is the geostrophic wind this is geostrophic wind so uh, in a rotating earth the particles really do not move from the high pressure toward low pressure it in a in a non-rotating system, the particle will be moving from the high pressure to the low pressure in order to to uh, smooth down the difference in the pressure. In the in the uh, case of the uh, of the rotating system, the particle is moving around the high low pressure or low pressure. They don't they don't move. If it were no friction. The slope, these differences in pressure would would be would go forever. There will be no way how to how to equ uh, equilibrate these, uh, how to smooth down the difference between a high and low pressure. But there is a there is a friction, and you will see later how this friction changes the direction of the velocity, geostrophic velocity with respect to the to this with respect to the. Uh, isobars. The lines of equal pressure is called uh, are called isobars. Okay. So this is this is how. So that this is why I told you uh, how we can reconstruct very easily 
Yeah, this is this is the these are the isobars. This is p, this is p plus one, and this is p minus one. So isobars are this way. And the 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 flow is that way, leaving the, the high pressure at the at its left. And this is this is exactly the same thing, except that here we are talking about the closed about the closed the iso isobars about the closed circulation system. And so okay, so this is the that's the that's the that's the geostrophic flow. How it looks like. Let's go ahead. So let's see other views. Uh, this is from another uh, from another view. This is pressure gradient force, which goes from from uh, it goes this way. We have a uh, from high pressure to low pressure. And we have a Coriolis force in that direction, and looking from above, the velocity is going that way, leaving, as I told you before, the low pressure on its left. This is the, always the normal hemisphere example. If you are, we are talking about the southern hemisphere, then the uh, then the uh, the uh, this has the the current, the current should go in the opposite direction. If you look at the cross section. What is happening is uh, this is this this how the uh, the uh, the uh, surface looks like in a uh, in a case of this uh, of this for example uh, uh, closed structure in a center you have the high pressure and on the borders you have a low pressure so on this side here. The pressure gradient force is going from the center toward the toward the boundary, toward the the, the periphery, and the Coriolis force in the in this direction. Therefore, we have the uh, the velocity into the into the paper. On the other side here, you have the pressure gradient force is in this way because here is the low pressure. But this is the, this is the opposite, and the Coriolis force in the opposite direction. So we have the, the the velocity going this way. So what that means, if we change, if we want to to make this as as it is on there, I simply write down here. High, if I write high here. So we have uh, I have p minus one, and here I have. P plus one, so it's high. In that case, what's happening? The the particle has to leave the low pressure on its left, and so what is this here? Here we change simply the direction, and we have uh, okay. So we have the counter. The, we have the clockwise flow around the high pressure center, which is that way there. Which is that 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 figure there? In a uh, in the atmosphere as well as in the in the ocean, we have both high and low pressure uh, uh, disturbances, and we have uh, both uh, a cyclonic and anti-cyclonic flow present in the atmosphere as well as in the ocean, and the uh, and we can see this uh, this in real life. We will see how. How they look like, and how we can, from the pressure gradient field, how we can reconstruct reconstruct the flow. Always, uh, you know, this is the this is what we can uh, we can uh, think of our ball. If the ball is at the top, at the, at the top of the hill, what is happening when the when the, ball, the ball is at the top of the hill? It will move by inertia down down the hill, and by moving down the hill. It will just try to change its uh, it changes its uh, direction of the uh, of the, of the flow of the flow down flow or downward by changing its direction in, in uh, to the right, and therefore finally it will go it will go this way around the high pressure center. 
or this way you know, around the high pressure center because first of all it will start from here it will fall down along the slope but due to the Coriolis force it will be more and more deflected to the right and finally it will uh, turn around the high pressure center simply due to the rotation of the earth okay So these are the, again, complete set of equations with the geostrophic balance which is there and uh, what is the... This is again cyclonic and anti-cyclonic clockwise or counterclockwise uh, flow in the southern hemisphere this time in a, in a uh, southern hemisphere, and you can see the uh, uh, a, yeah, no, this is this is northern hemisphere. This is wrong. Ah, yes, clock cyclonic is clockwise in northern hemisphere, counterclockwise in southern hemisphere, and so you can see this here. These are the high pressure, and this is the low pressure, and uh, you can see how we can really reconstruct the flow around the, the pressure field by, uh, by simply having the, uh, looking at the, uh, 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 the horizontal distribution of pressure. Uh, when, uh, well, how it works in, in meteorology, if, you, if we are uh, uh, looking at the, how they, they, uh, uh, they reconstruct the pressure field, they obtain a certain number of, uh, they have permanent stations, uh, 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 when I was uh, when I was uh, young or as young as you are, we were receiving the uh, the uh, the, the uh, meteor records where there is a between other parameters and temperature uh, atmospheric pressure. Then the pressure for different num for number of stations were arriving at the center and in a meteorological center. So the uh, we were we were having the the points with the with the, the direct measurement of atmospheric pressure, and then we reconstruct at that time by hand, reconstructing the pressure field, and not the by uh, by the um, objective analysis method or whatever. We reconstruct the pressure field, and then from the pressure gradient, we and from the uh, the fact whether it's low or high pressure we reconstruct the direction and the intensity of the, of the wind okay so yep yeah. by looking at the horizontal pressure gradient. So dp dx gives you the, the, the intensity. Okay, you have, uh, for one component, you have Fe is equal to uh, dp dx, okay? And so uh, you, you calculate the dpdx, and so v is equal to 1 over f dpdx. Okay? So th this is how you calculate one component, then you calculate another component, and then this is how you get the, the geostrophic velocity. Mm -hmm. In the world ocean, the situation is very similar to that and uh, uh, where again circulation is counterclockwise around the low cyclonic and the clockwise around the high anticyclonic in the northern hemisphere in southern hemisphere is the opposite and uh, here is the uh, here is the uh, uh, here you can see how this is the, the high, and in the high we have the counterclockwise of circulation, 
and here you have a clockwise circulation in the, in the middle latitude because you because you have a low and the opposite is in a uh, in a southern hemisphere where you have the counterclockwise uh, clockwise uh, circulation around the low and a uh, uh, and a, a counterclockwise uh, and and a clockwise around the high so this is how we uh, by looking at the horizontal distribution in the ocean we define the uh, we obtain the the geostrophic the geostrophic flow. See, oops. And this is the this is altimetric 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 surface height. And altimetric surface height. This is what I mentioned you uh, some times ago. That the um, that the, we are able from for using the satellites measure the sea surface deformation, and uh, from these uh, sea surface deformation we are able to uh, to uh, to calculate the geostrophic the geostrophic flow. So it's not only that we obtain the separate <coughs> sea surface deformation, but we obtain also the surface pressure gradient. Because the higher is the surface pressure, the higher is the, the the higher is the sea surface, the higher is the surface pressure. So, look look at this thing. For example, here this is the Pacific Ocean, and look at that, and you can see that the uh, this, these areas here and here they are areas of the relatively high sea level, and. Uh, and the same thing is uh, along the, the Atlantic Ocean. The high sea level, the high sea level is areas here and here. So, what uh, according to this, uh, according to our uh, knowledge, what we ob already we obtained a few minutes ago, we have uh, this is the sea surface. Okay, this one. And the pressure gradient force here is this way, from high to low, okay? And here is this way here. The, uh, the, in that case, the, the, this is PG, and, and Coriolis force is in opposite, should be in opposite direction in order to have the flow, steady flow, in order the flow which doesn't change with time in order to obtain geostrophic flow. And uh, so what is this thing? This, since Coriolis force is to the right-hand side with respect to the, uh, to the, um, to the, uh, to the, to the vector, to the velocity vector, we have the flow going this way, OK? And here we will have the opposite pressure gradient and uh, Coriolis force and here we have this thing if you look for if you look from above this thing here you obtain this uh, this is like a bulb of a high high sea level the bulb of high sea level means that the flow is uh, clockwise around this bulb so it goes this way it goes this way here and it goes in the southern hemisphere, it goes that way here, and here also. So the uh, so looking simply at the, at the sea surface pattern, we are able to recognize or to uh, to identify we, which are areas of the cyclonic or anticyclonic flow. And indeed, if we look at the the current measurements and uh, things here. You can see that the, the this this bulb of the high of the high sea level here is where we have the anti the where we have the anti great subtropical anticyclone. Okay. The subtropical anticyclone is uh, due to the to the fact that there is the uh, 
that we will see later how it comes, how it, what, how, what is the force which maintains this high, this high pressure, this high sea level there. If you look at here, at this area here, it's very interesting area here. You can see that here there is a strong horizontal sea level gradient. Hor strong sea level gradient means that you see the, the horizontal sea level sea level gradient. This is the x theta x, and the velocity is proportional to the velocity is proportional to the sea level gradient. So that means the higher is the sea level gradient, the higher is the velocity. So not only that we can obtain the, uh, the sense of the rotation of the, of the current, but very quantitatively we can obtain whether the current is strong or weak. And indeed, here, the, the ISO, uh, uh, the ISO lines or um, lines of equal height, sea surface height, are very, uh, very dense one to another, are very close to one to another. That means that the theta dx, so the horizontal gradient of the, of the sea level is very high. If the horizontal gradient of the sea level is very high, then that means that the, uh, the velocity is very high. And in fact, here around the Antarctica, there is a strong uh, 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 Antarctic current, which is the which is uh, which is expressed in terms of the of the horizontal uh, sea level gradient. And on the other hand, we know that this sea level gradient is maintained by the influence of the wind. Okay, so you can see that. How we uh, simply looking at the distribution of the uh, of the sea level, we can uh, read or reconstruct uh, the, the flow, the surface flow in the in the in the world ocean. This is a very high, very strong importance of the measurements of the of the sea surface height from uh, from satellite. Based everything based on a uh, yes. Excuse me? So there are high sea levels uh, associated with high pressure. Yes. How is that? Oh, so, you know, simply. Okay, let's. Uh, it's simply, if you look at the two points, point here in the sea and point here in the sea, if you have here the sea level is going this way, okay, here. The water column, which is above your point, is much higher. Than, is higher than here. Okay, so the weight, the weight of the water column here is higher than here. Or, in another words, the atmospheric, the pressure, the pressure is higher here than there because the pressure is defined as the weight of the water column above the point, your point. And here, the uh, the pressure gradient or Pressure differences are simply due to the height of the water column about the measure about the point where you measure. So it's the pressure only the surface of the water, but at a certain Yeah, obviously, a certain you, you cannot. Um, there is a, uh, a we have seen before that the uh, that the particle which is here, okay, is uh, if it were no uh, rotation. It will move down. It will move, move down the hill, but due to the rotation, it will go turn right in the northern hemisphere. It will turn right, but it's always the the the, the, the pressure in the sea is higher, even if you are very close to the surface. It's always, you know, if you are infinitesimally close to the surface, you always have a higher higher sea level above your point than than on the other side. It's not that you are being very, very surface. It's not that you are sitting right here. Okay. A, this is the surface geostrophic circulation. Schematically, 
and you can see that how it's uh, rather complicated on one hand, on the other hand it can be schematized, it's very simple, but this is the geostrophic circulation, a geostrophic circulation which is based on a uh, on a uh, altimetric altimetric measurements on measurements of the sea level, and you can see all these number of currents which are there. It looks like rather complicated, and uh, here is Antarctic circumpolar current, which I what I showed you before. Uh, there are these uh, these uh, these subtropical gyres, huge huge. Uh, closed structure which are present all the time there but you will see later how they are uh, what keeps giving the energy to these enormous enormous uh, giants where you have the, the flow on one hand side you have the flow you no know, Gulf Stream which makes you know really Gulf Stream makes part or Kuroshio makes part of this subtropical gyre it's a return current of this uh, Huge subtropical gyre, which is uh, which is asymmetric in a uh, in a latitudinal sense. We'll see later on why, and uh, and so this is how the, the the heat flows northward. But they are they are also maintained by the wind, and you will see later how the wind acts in maintaining these huge uh, huge structures. Uh, here is East Australian current system again, subtropical gyre, but on the southern hemisphere. And so this is the this is of this can be obtained either from the from the altimeter data or from the C2 measurements because you can measure directly in C2 and uh, and obtain these uh, these uh, subtropical or tropical the general circulation of the. Uh, here it is the uh, this is Antarctic circumpolar current what I was showing to you before which is clearly uh, seen from uh, from the surface uh, surface pressure gradient from or from the surface sea surface gradient obviously <coughs> this uh, the same thing can be seen from uh, from the vertical uh, structure of the circulation. For example, this is the Atlantic section of the potential density north-south. Uh, sorry, it's not north-south, but it, yes, it's north-south. And uh, this shows uh, where you, we, uh, if you have the stronger are the, the slope of the, uh, of the density of isopycnal surfaces, like here, these are so pigment surfaces. The stronger is the slope, the higher is the horizontal, the horizontal pressure gradient. Because if you think, if you look at the definition, the very definition of the, uh, the pressure, the pressure is the weight of the water, the water column between this, for example, and this one here. If you do the integral from here to there, and from here to there, what you will see is that the uh, that the density here is larger than the pressure is here larger than here okay and from that you will be able to just by looking at the horizontal pressure gradient or horizontal gradient of density you will be able to define what is the direction and also the the uh, the, the uh, magnitude of the of your geostrophic flow so the geostrophic flow can be obtained not not only at the surface by looking at the sea surface deformation or sea surface structure, it can be defined also by looking at the horizontal pressure gradient in the in the water column due to the density differences. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, do another few minutes and yeah, well, here it is. Here is the signal associated with the circumpolar current. We have seen before that the circumpolar, Antarctic circumpolar current is not, uh, can be easily seen from the surface. Can be seen from the surface, why? Because the, uh, 
what means uh, uh, lower density? Lower density means that the water column is stretched. If the density is higher of the water column, the water column is squeezed. So the uh, so here, close to the Antarctica, what we have is very low density. We have low density, which means that the that the, the water column is stretched. And if you go to the open to the open sea, far away from the Antarctic continent, then the density becomes higher and the water column is squeezed. So the, the, the whatever is happening at the surface reflects also the, what is happening in the water column. Okay? Why, is, why, the density, why the sea level is higher where the density is... Uh, uh, why the sea level is higher where the density is lower? Higher des lower density means higher temperature and lower salinity. Higher temperature means the stretching of the, of the water column. Okay. Lower density means the uh, higher density means the lower temperature and the squeezing of the water column. So the the signal is a, which is associated to the density can be seen at the surface as well. Okay. But obviously we will see later that the, the sea surface structure can reflect also the influence of the wind, not only, not only the, 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 the density structure within the water column. Ah, yeah, here it is what, uh, what really says the, 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 the graph. The graph says exactly this, what I told you. The uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the the density here is uh, lower than here. So the high the sea level is higher here than here. And uh, the surface current is from the paper outward. Why it's from the paper outward is because of the pressure gradient force which goes from here to there, and then you have the Coriolis force on the other side, because you remember this is the southern hemisphere, okay? So in the southern hemisphere, the, uh, the Coriolis force acts on the left-hand side with respect to the flow, okay? Professor, yes? So if I understood correctly, uh, I can say that the pressure is greater when the density of the water column above is lower, the pressure is lower where the density is lower. Here, here you have the density higher. And the pressure at a certain depth is higher here than here. But the this, this very surface, at the very surface, the, uh, the, the sea level is lower here and therefore the the pressure is lower there, so you have a two 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 processes. One is the density, the pressure within the water column, which depends on the density of the water column, and the other thing is the density, the the, water, the pressure, which depends on the height of the water, of the seawater. If we if we were if we had the uh, the vertically homogeneous water column. The pressure will de would depend only on the height of the water column. Okay. So the barotropic yes, barotropic. And so the higher the higher is the slope, the higher will be the pressure. However, here intervene also the density, and the density does exactly opposite what the sea level does. So in the first very first part of the water column. The, the internal pressure, the pressure due to the, the differences in density, is not able to invert the surface pressure. But more we go deeper, more is contribution of the difference in density of internal pressure. Therefore, at a certain at a certain depth, the pressure the pressure gradient inverts, inverts because there is a Different, the, 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 the density intervenes and changes the, the sign of this pressure. 
you will say later uh, when we will be talking about the thermal wind relationship which is due to the fact that there is this inversion of the horizontal pressure gradient due to the different density gradient in the seawater. Otherwise, if it were uh, homogeneous, vertically homogeneous with the, therefore barotropic flow, the, the current will be at every at every depth will be of the same am amplitude of the same magnitude of the same direction. So that's what causes the counter currents, for example. Yes, counter current comes simply because uh, there is a uh, there is the diff the, the heterogeneous density field which then is able to invert the surface the surface current or the current component driven by the sea level slope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here it is low and high pressure at the surface. And this is what uh, what uh, what we are talking about. At the surface, there is the, the current flowing in the in the uh, from here to there, but then more we go deeper, there is the uh, more intervene the horizontal pressure gradient due to the density difference, and uh, at a certain depth, we will have the inversion of the flow. The flow will be in an opposite direction with, res with respect to the surface flow. This is the uh, that's the that's the influence of the of the so here are the, the different let me finish with this there are different uh, different uh, steps or different uh, elements we have to a compute in order to observe the geostrophic circulation. First of all, here we have to observe the horizontal and vertical distribution of density, and which depends on temperature and salinity. Therefore, we measure temperature and salinity. We obtain uh, directly from those two. We measure the, the uh, we de determine density. Current speed is, and direction is what we want. We want and we obtained it from the density distribution. We can't mis measure the sea surface site accurately enough that will change with, with improving you know, observing system, but it is historically the case. This is not true. Now we are now able to, uh, to measure with, uh, with a good, uh, with a good uh, precision. We, we are able to measure the sea surface slope. And therefore, we are able, with a rather good uh, uh, precision, determine the surface geostrophic flow. Steady state as a pigment slope tell us that the geostrophic current is varying with depth vertically shear. This is what we have seen before. If the uh, the um, isopicnals of the lines of equal density are horizontal, there will be no vertically. Change, changes of the vertical or oh, uh, vertical changes of the horizontal velocity, what we call shear, the geostrophic flow will be constant with depth. But since usually uh, quite often the uh, the uh, isopicnas are sloped, so we are talking about uh, we will see later baroclinic fluid, the, uh, the the geostrophic current will be vertically sheared, will be varying with depth. Most currents we see are wind driven and therefore strongest at the sea surface decaying with depth. So we have not yet been talking about the geostrophic current, of the wind driven current, we will be talking very soon. We therefore make a very educated or very uneducated guess at the current speed and direction at some depth and use the density field to figure out how the current changes with depth and depth location in latitude and longitude. Geostrophic flow means that we have uh, neglected the uh, the wind influence, but the uh, we we know that the wind driven and therefore this, the the wind driven component of the flow is uh, is very important by uh, by assuming that there is only geostrophic flow in the first thousand meters or first very in a surface layer we. Uh, do a pretty large error 
but in deeper layers, the geostrophic flowing is a very good approximation. So uh, this is the that's the that's uh, how we proceed, and uh, we will. Uh, I think it's better that we stop here. I just uh, give you the. Uh, uh, why don't we say a few words about this thing and then we stop. Uh, Similar to the, to the uh, uh, Antarctic flow, circumpolar Antarctic current, we have the uh, we are able to uh, to see the uh, to see the internal field to see the horizontal pressure gradient or horizontal density gradient within the Gulf Stream, and what has been done here is simply there has been done a transect from Florida toward the toward the open sea. And uh, they have measured the density. This is the density field. You recognize this 27.3 is 1027.3 uh, kilogram per meter cubic. And you can see that they are rather, rather strongly sloped, which means that here we have the, uh, the strong shear, the strong changes, vertical changes of the velocity. And uh, you can see how, and on the other hand, also the, the, um, the, um, the uh, and this is how geostrophic flow looks like. It's, sorry, uh, but this is not very nicely nice. Uh, uh, I will read for you. This is the, like a one meter, 1.5 meter per second is the velocity here calculated from the density field. So the, the, the the, the center of this, or the core of the Gulf Stream, is uh, 150, kilo, 150 meters, 1.5 meter per second velocity, and this is concentrated in a uh, like uh, 60, 70 kilometers from the coast. So it's a huge, uh, huge amount of water which flows in a very narrow, in a very narrow area. It's deep only. Uh, like three, four hundred meters, and all this, only this very, very uh, small thing takes and uh, takes all this heat from the uh, Mexico to the to the polar areas, uh, thanks to the great, great velocities which are here. Okay, so uh, let's stop here, and uh, we'll continue next. Uh, We'll continue with along this line tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow at 11, right? Okay. Uh, good.